check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. sound right boy welcome to the premiere of season 15 here in the ffl as we follow the boston cavalry who are number four going against the number 22 sacramento wolves big stories this week as uh, i mean there's tons with the cavalry but we're facing a former coach who coached our coach we're also going to be seeing uh, some familiar faces on Sacramento as we see Bill Gable says quarterback Jamie Brooks is lightening up practice and is ready to start week one and so we'll be facing the number one quarterback in this past draft also the Cavalry Boston's locker room on the rocks due to major offseason moves can they come together this season like trading for Corey Mills who is known to be a loud mouth on defense and Ahmad Rice, who got himself out of Milwaukee. And one of the biggest stories this week, as we'll go into more detail in a little bit, Guardians all-star Edge Zach Swenson forced to retire earlier today in the game versus Philly. The game is still going on as we speak, but it's about to be over. An awful accidental hit between a teammate and two O-linemen. The doctors say he has broke his hip in such a way that he may never walk again. Sad to see a possible future Hall of Famer go out like this, and that is true. Like I said, we'll go into it a little bit later. Also, another big game, Hogs. Deacon Moss, who's just uh, an undrafted free agent, who was unjustly arrested years ago and sent to prison, is let out due to father and preacher Parker, uh, DJ Parker, fighting for his release but here we start with Boston as they give it to Reed Weathers at fullback he gets a good gain of six Reed Weathers and this Boston offense has changed a lot they traded away Smoochie Wallace and trying to go with more of a one tight end three wide receiver sets they're still gonna have two tight ends especially with Bryant out there being a good run blocker and then they give it to Darren Morris up the middle yet again we're going to see a lot of these twin back sets where they have both uh, backs on the field due to them being really good with power. And there we go, Darren Morris getting the first down. With this game, I'm going to be showing a lot of the plays, a lot less cuts, uh, and some uh, between drives, there will be score updates throughout the game. And now we're here. First down and 10. Jackson Thomas won in practice. The quarterback roll as he throws it to Angel Lopez down the left side. He got himself out of L.A. due to commissioner release program. And he found himself in Boston as a receiver. And Jackson Thomas, who is not supposed to start this season, gives it to Reed Weathers for the first. Jackson Thomas has really shown himself to be probably one of the best quarterbacks already. He's a rookie. Basically, he played one game last year due to his injury to his broken left arm. He said he's 100% now and in the best shape of his life at only 19 years old. He's big. He has a big arm. He sits in the pocket. He throws it to Tanner Beckham the third, as he gets a gain of three. Thomas, like I said, has one of the strongest arms, if not the strongest arm in the league. That's why he's actually getting the start. Uh, Evan McCarthy said that even though he was a big get for Boston as a backup, Jack Thomas throws it, it's almost picked off. Anyway, McCarthy had said that he wanted to start, but he saw that Jackson Thomas had everything to start and that he needed some time off. So now he's the backup, and now he's being uh, learning to coach under Cameron Scalone. And then Jackson Thomas throws it deep to Tanner Beckham the third. 
burning Tobias down the field. Former wide receiver turned tight end, burning a former wide receiver turn defensive back. First down and goal now. Jackson Thomas looks really comfortable in this offense. Especially with one of the best O-lines around him. He sits to the bucket, throws it down the field. Of Bryson Rice for the touchdown. Tight end gets a big touchdown there, putting them up by seven now here with the first score update of the game. Guardians versus Philadelphia. We talked about this earlier. Zach Swenson had an unlikely injury that has pretty much ended his career. It's really sad to see. He might try to come back in the future. But the fact is he got pinned. His leg got pinned between a teammate who was pushed over. And he came in and his leg forced his hip to break. It was really sad to see. He was put out on a stretcher and he could not walk. And the Guardians come up with a win against Philly. Two interdivisional rival, uh, in a interdivisional rivalry. Sorry, but thirty-one to seventeen. Was it really worth losing Zach Swenson though? I don't think so personally. And it's gonna be hard to see what the Guardians can do because they were really hoping for that push, pass rushing from Zach Swenson and get that pressure. He doesn't get the most sacks every year, but the fact is he's top five in pressures every single year, and it's going to really hurt their defense, and they're trying to go all in since Neve Watts is still the most accurate quarterback in the league, even though it makes zero sense. He's never been accurate his whole entire career. All of a sudden, he comes to New York, and he's firing on all cylinders only if he could have been like this, he probably had way more championships than just one. But then the Revolution, they're fighting their own battles with a really strong defense and their offense is just not cutting it. They have a star quarterback who does play really well. He's decently efficient nowadays, but he doesn't have a lot of star receivers, nor does he have uh, a, a established amazing secondary on defense so let's just see what the cavalry can do here on defense facing the sacramento wolves we see jamie brooks for the first time in his career playing a game getting the start as the mod race is on the right side and it's almost intercepted by white our new defensive back taking over for ketrick buffin who's moved to linebacker the nice thing about Rice is that with the Blackbirds, he was set down on the line. We know he was coming into this season with a hurt foot, but the but Boston knew that and knew what they were getting into. They were putting Rice on the outside since he's the fastest linebacker in the league, and he could keep switching sides. So we're not going to see a lot of Rice on Stinson, who is the best left tackle in the league. But we're seeing it right here. Watch to your left side. But now big run by Bryant gets stuffed by Beckett Bradshaw. He had a good season last year, but it was kind of down. Let's look at another score update as the Atlanta Revenge absolutely destroy the Brooklyn Hawks. Now, this year, they are the Brooklyn Hawks. They've been the Brooklyn Hawks the last couple years, ever since... Uh, even right before Bryce O'Connell came to uh, New Jersey slash Brooklyn. They are playing in New Jersey right now due to uh, a weird situation with ownership. They are possibly going on sale uh, for the first time since 1999. And on top of that, they might have to change their name since the New Jersey Hawks is owned by the owner as the name and he said he's given up the team the team spot and the team but he's not given up the name since he wants to own a team in a different league so they will be changing names while they move to brooklyn with a new owner but here they have all that they need but they get destroyed by the revenge who are in the middle of reloading their team now back with boston as they give it to Sean White from the Discord, getting a gain of four. He's an undrafted running back. He's already one of the fastest running backs in the league. He just can't really break a lot of tackles. Now, Jackson Thomas senses pressure. He could have uh, went up, but now he's taking himself. He was waiting. He jukes and finally gets taken down. He's 
hurt though. Looks like nope, he's getting up. Looks like the breath was just knocked out of him for a second though. Thomas has to be careful, especially how he broke his arm last year. First down and ten. Thomas steps back. He throws it to Darren Morris out of the backfield. He jukes to the left. It gets tackled by an army right there of Wolves defenders for a gain of six. Darren Morris had an amazing season last year, but even Scalone said that it's not going to be a one-back system this year. He expects both of them to only have a 1,000 yards as Weathers takes it up the field for almost a first. He thinks that Darren Morris will work better with less load so he can get more yards per attempt. And now Sean White tries to get the pitch, and he gets taken down. He also said that possibly it might be a four-headed rushing attack with all three backs and Jackson Thomas. And for the last score update of this half, I believe we have the Las Vegas Lightning facing off against the San Francisco Dragons, our former team. Dragons end up beating them 46 to 31. Luckily for the Lightning, they have a quarterback that they got last year. He hasn't thrown a pick in now four years. It's season 15. He hasn't thrown a pick since season 11, and he still hasn't thrown a pick this season. And the but the Dragons destroy them since the Lightning have the worst defense in the league. And now here we go. First down and ten. Jamie Brooks under center, giving it to Bryant. Bruno takes it up for a gain of one. He is a Ironman player playing running back and linebacker, but he gets stopped there. Second down and nine for the Sacramento Wolves. High formation, they give it to Culp, who's been on the team for almost 16 years as he gets the first. A underrated fullback right there. And now first down 10, they give it to Bryant, who gets stopped at the line of scrimmage. Sacramento needs to get Jamie Brooks out here uh, and playing like he needs to. He has a star receiver in Jaquan, Oregon, and another speed threat in Deshaun Woods. As now, he sits in the pocket, he throws it to Oregon, who gets stopped for a small gain. It's going to be third down and four. And now... They run up the clock, and it's going to be the end of the first quarter. So far, Cavalry are only up 7-0. to zero. Third down and four now. Jamie Brooks under center. Steps back, and he throws over the middle of the field. It's intercepted! Garrett Jensen jumped the pass. It bounced off his helmet, and he caught it. A great interception by... Garrett Jensen right there as we see it one more time. Jamie Brooks throws it. It hits off the back of his helmet. It just wasn't accurately thrown. And now it is Cavalry Ball at the Sacramento 23 nearing the red zone. They give it to, to Darren Morris out of the single back formation and he gets a first. Morris tends to do better in these single back formations unless it's the two back going right up the middle of the field. But I've noticed out of the uh, split back formations and in the shotgun split back formations, he is not great with Reed Weathers in front of him. Now first down and ten, Morris to the right side. They want to go. They have gone all in this season. Jackson Thomas gets the ball. He throws it to Morris. He gets open field, and that's a touchdown for Boston. Morris with receiving touchdown off the screen. He said they're going to try to use more screens even more than they did last year to see what the defenses are in. First down and 10 for Jamie Brooks and the Sacramento offense. Number 9, changing the play at the line. He's very smart. He sits in the pocket, throws it to Oregon, who gets a good gain of 8. Oregon is a good route runner. He's starting to age finally. He's been in the league for 15 years. He was a rookie the very first season we had on YouTube. And he was with Milwaukee for a very long time. Went to the Dragons, and now he's with the Sacramento Wolves. And now another big tackle by Garrett Jensen stopping the play before it even gets started. Bruno Bryant is having a hard game, but this defense is elite. 
You can bag on Cameron Scalone just trading away their future just to get a really good defense. But there we go. Stan Main, future Hall of Fame tight end, gets another first in his career. He's the leading receiver for the Sacramento Wolves in his career. And he gets another first down. And now Brooks does it to the left side. It's caught by Woods. And it's an, a gain of three. And again, they give it to Bryant on the draw. And that goes nowhere. The problem with Bill Gable's offense is they kind of run too many draws for their running backs. Third down and eight. Brooks throws it to the right side, and it's caught. And it's going to be a first down by Philip Mankins. So you see this again. He's a speedster. This offense is predicated on speed as Mankins gets a nice out route for the first. Wolves are down by 15. They're marching towards the uh, red zone here with Buffin as the edge and now again Beckett Bradshaw makes a good tackle as Garrett Jensen comes in and wipes the floor with Bryant Ahmad Rice is off the field I knew he came into the season with a hurt foot and Boston knew about it but it looks like Ahmad Rice is not in the game as finally Corey Mills tackles Jamie Brooks I wonder if Ahmad Rice is okay we saw him go down a little bit earlier but he's still not in the game. Now Evan Forbes is in. And they're in the base 3-4 set. As they give it to Bruno Bryant again. And he falls forward for the first. First down and 10 now. They're in the gun. Which really helps out this defense. As they get another running play stopped. Before the line of scrimmage. Bear Calhoun is one of the strongest D tackles in the league. Especially for his size, only being six foot two, he has a lot of leverage and he's very wide. Luckily, this Boston team does run a lot of three four sets with Cal Herbert at the left. And now a big play by Deshaun Woods, almost getting a first. This defense is starting to get a little tired. It looks like. Can they stop Sacramento? It's offsides. And Jamie Brooks passes it to Bryant for a loss. But since it's offsides, they're going to go ahead and get a first here. Can Boston stop them? This Sacramento team is just inching first down after first down. Can they get a touchdown here with Bruno Bryant getting a handoff? Breaking a tackle. Breaking another and finally gets taken down at the Boston 2. As we see here, Ahmad Rice has come out. And it says that he has a broken foot. We knew he possibly had a fracture coming in. But it looks like he actually broke his foot uh, in a play earlier this drive. Obviously, it makes sense why he's out. I mean, he's a very fast guy. And I think he's still dieting down. I mean, he was 270. Now he's 260. He said he was feeling better. But he's going to be out for five weeks. We traded a whole bunch of picks and players for basically a mod rice. And it turns out that for five weeks, he's going to be out. And he's going to be out for the rest of the game. Now, in the future, they've said that they're probably going to keep Evan Forbes as the edge. But for this game, they have Ketrick Buffin coming in from middle linebacker to edge because of his speed. I think they really want to have a speedster on that side to contain Jamie Brooks. And now Brooks gives to Bryant as Bryant tries to force himself into the end zone but can't. And that's stopped by Garrett Jensen. He's all over the place this game. Third down and goal. They're in the gun. Split back with a tight end. Brooks under center in the shotgun. He's running with the ball, and he breaks the tackle for the touchdown. Brooks takes it himself, and he's unstoppable with that speed. He's so small, he can fit in the smallest little holes. And we're going to go to halftime. Welcome to the Halftime Show, and it's sponsored and supported by you guys. Whether it's for free with likes and subscriptions and comments also down below you can find my patreon it is updated and has new 
levels and new uh, systems here and let's start with the first one one dollar a month you can become a player for free uh becoming a player is free on you know even on youtube it's not a thing it's just if you are a supporter you'll get a player just for fun a uh, supporter basically just keeps uh the lights on it's nothing crazy you're not gonna get any crazy content or more content or be a part of the pa actual patreon it's more of just like a kind of a donation tier but your name will be in the video uh as you will with the rest of these memberships and this mostly supporter is just a nice change of pace not a lot of people do one dollars anymore and i just frankly don't care one dollar is just a nice thank you uh to me next fanatic uh is a very big tier i think it'll be the most popular tier it's only three dollars a month but it's jammed packed with a whole bunch of content you get behind the scenes content you obviously get a player uh, you get the name in the video but you also get a live stream once a week or at least a video uh where you guys live uh can chat with me and we'll discuss the future of the league and weekly updates and so on and so forth you guys can be in the chat and interact with me also with uh fanatic uh, like i said with the behind the scenes content will be little things to update you guys on how far I am with the video and some other things as well. $10 a month will be the super fan tier. Here you get everything that the $3 and the and the $1 gets except you also get to be able to call in to live streams. So uh, I'll have it set up to where you don't you don't just get to chat, but you can also go on and become uh, and have your face or just your voice on the live stream discussing with me about the league and about the storylines. Uh, and if you end up being an owner of a team, you can discuss uh, what you're like what you possibly might do uh, in the off season as well. Uh, Ten dollars a month. Again, it's you know it it doesn't have like a super big amount of uh content but i think it's still a good price and like i said you get early content 24 hours early next are the two most expensive ones i don't really see anyone doing but if you want to go ahead mega fan you get a player like all the other ones you get everything you get the early content the behind the scenes you get uh the patreon podcast um you also can become uh a part of the special mega fan monthly hangouts that'll be with ballers and mega fans only it's once a month you can discuss with me about teams and your players and updates as well and just maybe just screw around and talk even maybe play video games with me uh, and then lastly baller you get everything i just mentioned you also become a co-podcast host with me for a whole episode uh, or more if i like you um, and you get a special $50 baller discord, you become a sponsor as well, so you're gonna have your whole own, uh, overlay on my videos where you are a sponsor, and like I said, a special baller discord where you guys can hang out together and or hang out with me and just, uh, discuss life with me and everything else other than that uh basically everything will stay the same you guys will be getting more content for free as well look with those live streams going on vod uh every week you guys just get to participate with it live um those live streams won't start until i at least have like five or ten patreons uh, or patrons i should say but until then thank you guys for watching like i said this isn't a um needed thing it, it's completely optional like i said most content will stay free games will stay free uh being a coach or owner is free and let's get back to the video now, after halftime, Jamie Brooks comes out in the shotgun. And we know that Mod Rice is hurt. And like we said, uh, Buffin from the Discord will be on the edge. And they give it to Bryant. And Forbes makes the tackle. Thing is, Buffin, he's, he can actually pass rush. He was our DB for, uh, I think, the last two years or at least last year. 
and we knew that he is actually a really good tackler and we're gonna see him use his speed right there as he breaks through the o-line cutting through the guard and getting a big sack for Ketrick Buffin from the discord good job on that one now third down and 14 Brooks sits in the pocket, he throws it deep to Oregon, who splits the defense and gets a first down. What a play. We even had extra defenders right there. He found the pockets between the zones and got the ball delivered to him perfectly by Brooks. Now Brooks sits in the pocket, throws it to the right to stand in as he protects the ball, outruns Beckett Bradshaw, and is taken down. Good play on Maine. First down and 10 now. As we give it, as they give it to Bryant. And Bryant gets tackled for a, a loss due to Keswick Buffin's speed. I mean, he may not be as fat as Ahmad Rice, but he did play DB last season. So it makes sense. Second down, 13 now. Brooks throws it to the left side. It's caught. At the sideline by Deshaun Woods. Now third down and 10. Got a long way to go here. Brooks here down by 8. He sits in the pocket. Throws it over the middle of the field. It's caught. But they can't get the first. With Willis Sloan making the catch. They're going to be forced to take the field goal here. They're so close. But so far away. The ball is kicked. And it's through the uprights. As Sacramento is only down by five now now before we go to the next uh drive here the last score update we have is the la monarchs versus the san antonio bears the monarchs went into overtime and they kicked a field goal in the last moments of it the bears who have one of the best passing offenses in the league were just right there but could not handle the Monarchs. What really suffered was the Bears defense with only one really good pass rusher, some below average uh, players on the secondary. I think their defense is really letting them down. And with the Monarchs being so stacked at pretty much every position, it's going to be hard to try to out muscle them. And the fact is they did really well until the fourth quarter where the monarchs got a touchdown tied the game 31 31 they end up going to overtime and the bears don't have even a chance to get it while the monarchs slowly went down the field earning 3.4 yards a carry and 3.5 yards per catch and franchise just nickel and dined them all the way and it just did not matter by the end. But good job by the Monarchs for defeating them in such a uh, fashion, especially near the end of the game. Now here with the Boston Cavalry starting at their own 44. After a good kick return, they give it to Darren Morris, who gets stopped at the line. Morris has been showing some uh, loss of speed this past season. It's very weird to see as Jackson Thomas avoids one sack. And former Boston Cavalry D-tackle Samuel Montalvo here with a big hit on Jackson Thomas. Now Thomas trying to step up third down 23. He's taking himself down the sideline. The prodigy taking it and taken down at the Sacramento 39. What a run by Jackson Thomas showing that speed. I mean, that's why they got him. One of the fastest quarterbacks to ever play the position. And there he goes. Darren Morris again. Perfect blocking down the field on the counter. Touchdown as he dances into the end zone. What a play by Darren Morris following his amazing blockers. And now it's Wolves ball down by 11. As he sits in the pocket. Brooks throws it in between coverages. And it's caught by Oregon. Completely defeating that man coverage they've been running all game. Throwing it between the safety and white. Wow. What a throw. And now Bryant makes a big uh, broken tackle. But then gets smacked by Corey Mills. Second down and 12. Now they give it to Bryant. He finally gets some blocking. And gets hit down. Good hit by the safety again. Third down and six. 
They want Buffin to be the contain for Brooks as they give it to Brian again who gets some yards. But they're going to be forced to punt. Big stop for Boston. Can they score some more points on the board? First down and 10 nearing the end of the third quarter already. They give it to Darren Morris who gets stopped at the line. Second down 10 now, they give it to Sean White who gets some blocking but gets tackled from behind by Montalvo. Third down and eight, no huddle. Thomas likes some he sees here. He play action to White. He's using his speed. He sees someone open but he's just gonna take it himself. No blocking ahead and he gets taken down for a big gain of more than 20 by himself. Thomas leading the team in rushing currently. And he has a great passer rating at 133. First down and 10. Jackson sets up as he gets rushed. He gives it to Morris who jukes but gets almost a first down. Taking, taken down inches before the marker. Less than 10 minutes to go into the game. Can Sacramento come back here? As they pitch it to Sean White who gets hit in the shoulder by London. It's going to be third down and one. They give it to Reed Weathers who powers through a tackle by London. That's going to be a first down. Just two years ago, Weathers had over 2,000 yards rushing. Last year, Darren Morris had over 2,000 yards rushing. Now they're going to have both of them run it more as Morris gets the handoff but he gets taken down for a two-yard loss as Morris is averaging 6.4 yards a carry. Now Weathers gets the handoff. He breaks the tackle. He hits the outside. He stiff arms a defender and gets thrown out of bounds. He just lost his balance after the stiff arm and he runs out of bounds. Thomas. In the pocket, he breaks one sack. He's taking himself, and he gets taken down for a gain of seven. This rushing offense is incredible. Easily top five. Now second down and three now. Thomas sits in a perfect pocket. He throws over the middle, and it's dropped by Jamichael Lyons. Usually they have Xavier Speed out there, and now he's out there. Will they pass on third and three? They don't. They give it to Sean White, who gets a block missed for him. He gets taken down before the first. And now Jackson Thomas in the empty. Fourth down and one. They get a direct snap to Thomas. He breaks a tackle. He breaks another and finally gets taken down by an army of Wolves players. Now they're in the red zone here. First down and ten. Morris in the shotgun. With Jackson Thomas. And now they give it to Morris on the counter. Get perfect protection for Morris. Touchdown. Can Brooks get the Sacramento Wolves to come back? He throws over the middle of the field. And it's caught by Stan Main. Future Hall of Fame tight end. Second down and three now. Brooks sits in the pocket again. He throws over the middle of the field. It's intercepted by Lovelock. Vincent Lovelock, who had two 70-yard-plus pick sixes, gets a big pick right there. First down and 10. Jackson Thomas sits in the pocket. He gets smacked by Samuel Montalvo. Just pushing back their center, who is their former tackle. Now Jackson Thomas taking himself. They're in man coverage. He saw it. And now he's going down the field. Can anyone catch him? Finally gets pushed out of bounds at the Sacramento 19. But Reed Weathers looks hurt. Oh no. He looks really hurt there on the field. That's not good. This four-headed rushing attack is going to be hurt now without Reed Weathers on the field. And now Jack Thomas throws it deep. The back of the third touchdown. Beckham gets the ball overthrown. He dives and gets the big touchdown. He led the, lead, the team last year in receiving touchdowns. And now fourth down and five. We got fast forward here. Jamie Brooks, two-minute warning. He's clutch here. Can he make another comeback? They're down by 24. And they give the ball to Philip Mankins. And that's a first. Jamie Brooks. 
He can destroy zone coverages as he does yet again. And they get out of bounds with Deshaun Woods running towards the sideline. Shotgun again here. Brooks changes the play. He steps back. He throws it quickly. It's a touchdown to guess who? Stan Main. And now they're only down by 17 points. Now there's a minute 35 to go. But any points that the Cavalry get will end the game as Angel Lopez gets an amazing catch down the field. Gets wide open using his former basketball skills, positioning perfectly down against defenders. Now Jackson Thomas rushing, and he's taking himself. He jukes, he breaks the tackle, and he gets another first as Sacramento uses another timeout. Boston's got to be careful here. If they're too aggressive, they can give the ball back. And first, and there you go, Xavier Gonzalez! Speedy Gonzalez with a big receiving touchdown in his career. Former offensive playmaker quarterback turned wide receiver. He is the reason why they're using the two-back system to get him more into the game. What an amazing game for Boston as even though they didn't lead time of possession, they had zero turnovers, 303 rushing yards, and 157 passing yards. Good job by Boston, but was it worth it with two big injuries to the team? How will this continue? Tonight, I'll be posting on the Discord in the weekly news part of it. And I'll be updating some news for you guys. I'll see you guys then. Peace.